So if you've ever wondered how to check your squishy timing, today's video we're going to be showing you how. Welcome back to the Power of Public YouTube channel. Today's video we're going to be showing you how to check your ignition timing using a dial indicator and also checking the squish of your engine using 2mm solder. So let's get to it. Okay, so when you're checking your ignition timing, it's best to take the engine off the go-kart so that you can really get a good side-on view of the timing marks. So this is your uh, stator plate on your, this is an IAMI engine, but it's very similar on the Vortex okay, um, Mini Rock and also to your shifter carts, pretty similar ignition system. Uh, it's, it's pretty common. You've got your stator here and these two bolts hold it into place. And then this here is what they call the rotor. And on here is your timing marks. And also too on the stator, you've got a timing mark here. So when you, they all line up like so, that there is your fire point. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do once you've got your card off is remove your spark plug. So for this job, you are gonna require a couple of specialized tools a dial indicator, some digital vernier calipers, and some two millimeter solder. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna to need to do is grab your dial indicator and its little extension, and screw that into the spark plug hole. So the next thing you need to do is wind the crankshaft over top dead center. You can see here that the needle comes up, then it goes down, then it goes down, then it goes up. It looks back to front, but all I'm doing here is rocking the engine over the top dead center. That means when the piston's at the top of its stroke and it's starting to come back down. So this is the top, that's going backwards, that's the top, that's going forwards. So the top dead center is about there. But that's not relative to your timing at the moment. All we need to do is get these timing marks lined up. And I'm going to show you that now. Now that you've found the top dead center, Rotate the bezel on your dial indicator so it indicates zero, zero, zero. And do it a few times and rock it over. And if there's any misalignment, you can just adjust that as necessary. And then you should be good to go. Now for this particular engine, there's a limit of 3.2 millimeters as the maximum allowable time. So what we're gonna do is show you how to adjust it so that it's well inside your 3.2 maximum time. So now that we've set our dial indicator to show zero, we want to come down backwards. Now, the timing is set three millimeters before top dead center. So you want to rotate the engine backwards so that the timing fires here as it's turning clockwise through its uh, normal operating cycle. So we shoot the spark plugs off before top dead center so we get maximum cylinder pressure once the piston reaches the top dead center for maximum efficiency and power. So rotating the engine clockwise, which is backwards, we're going to count one millimeter, two millimeters, three millimeters, and now we're going to check to see if our lines match up. So I've put some blue text on there to try to highlight the line on the on the rotor, so you can see it on the video. And I'm just using a razor blade on the line of the of the stator, and you just marry those two up, and that should be three millimeters. So now, if you want to adjust your timing. All you need to do is undo these two screws. So now that you've loosened the two screws off, you can advance the timing by turning the stator opposite of rotation, which is clockwise. Otherwise, if you wanted to retard the timing, you could turn it counterclockwise, which is the same direction as rotation, and it's closer to the top dead center. That's the retarded timing. And then to set it at three millimeters, just set your dial indicator up at zero on three, line up your two lines, make sure that you don't let the stator come off and on, because this is magnetized, the rotor, and it will pull the stator in, and then it'll rub in operation. So you want to make sure you're holding the stator off the rotor, make your two lines meet up, Do up your screws, and you're ready to go. So now if you have to remove the rotor, it's as simple as getting a 17 millimeter impact socket, putting it out on the end of the crankshaft,
spinning that off and it just pulls straight off. So you can see here on the rotor we've got a little keyway. So that's for the alignment of this to the crankshaft so you don't have to worry about its orientation. You just got to make sure that this little keyway is in here on the crankshaft so that when you slide this on like this, just a little jiggle and it slides straight on. And it can only go on one way. Then reinstall the nut. Grab a rattle gun. On a light setting, you don't want to spin the nut off the end of the crankshaft and lock that into place. If you're liking these videos, please consider subscribing, turning on your notification and giving us a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. Okay, so now we're going to check the squish of the engine. Now the squish gap is the area above the piston and below the combustion chamber of the cylinder head. And we measure that by squishing the piece of solder between the two parts. All we have to do is get some two millimeter solder, roll yourself out about hundred millimeters and turn the end at 90 degrees. So what we're gonna do now that we've got our solder ready is we're gonna insert this in through the spark plug hole. And what I like to do is I like to insert my, my solder in through the spark plug hole until it touches the top of the piston crown. And then wind the engine back from top dead center and slide this over until it hits the piston wall or oh, the wall of the cylinder, sorry. And then we're gonna just roll the engine up through top dead center and squash this between the piston and the cylinder head. Once we've done that, we can remove it and measure it with the digital calipers. So insert your solder through the spark plug hole, touching it on the piston crown. You should be close to top dead center. It makes it, the job a bit easier. Once you've done that, using your 17 millimeter ring spanner, wind the engine back, quarter of a turn, slide your solder across the piston crown until you feel it hit the the wall of the cylinder, and then simply wind the engine over top dead center using your spanner. Remove the solder out of the combustion chamber area. You can see here that the solder has been squished between the piston and the cylinder head, and now we're going to measure it with the digital calipers. You grab your digital calipers, slide them on to the solder that's been squashed, and you want to find the tightest point. Cut side one off, and do the same on the other side, and you take the average of both for your final squish measurement. Okay, so there you have it. That's how you check your squish. Now, sometimes if you're running close to your limits, you might, and you're burning like a castor oil, it builds up a carbon deposit on the combustion chamber and on the piston crown, and you will go under the squish limit. So you'll need to monitor those and clean them off. Otherwise, run a synthetic oil like the Motul Grand Prix 2T, which is a great oil, and it also doesn't leave any carbon out in that squish area. You get a little bit in the, the very center of the piston crown, but it doesn't go all the way out to the edges where the squish test is performed. Generally, we set these up here at the workshop and the guys can run those synthetic oils, no problems, bring them back in. They never fail the, the squish test. But if you are running the castor oils and you are running a close squish gap, you're gonna to have to keep your eye on it using the solder and checking. And if that is the case, just take your four bolts of the cylinder head off remove the head, clean the carbon off, put it all back together and recheck your squish after you tension the head down. So there you have it. That's how you check your ignition timing and your squish gap for your K100s, mini rocks. You can do that on a Rotax engine, you can check the squish, you can't really check the timing on those. But it's pretty constant over most engines. If you like these videos, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Turn on those notifications, follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Power Republic or go to our fantastic website www.powerrepublic.com.au and grab yourself a t-shirt, a hat or KA100 racing engine. See you in the next video.